GameStop shares grabbed headlines around the world as the video game retailer saw an astronomical surge in stock prices. An influx of retail investors drove prices as high as $483 at one point, far above the $17 valuation at the beginning of 2020. Some jumped on the bandwagon as a quick money-making scheme, but for others it had a deeper meaning, a stand against traditional institutional investors who profited from betting that certain companies would lose value. The rally now seems to have mostly subsided as stock lost steam, they lost value almost as quickly as they'd risen and now as the dust settles, it's become very clear that retail investors are on the rise. Meanwhile, in Korea, authorities decided to extend the ban on short selling, which began last year. Many question whether this will hurt or harm Korea's stock market growth in the long run. Now to discuss all of this, I am joined today by Joachim Clement, Head of Strategy at Liberum Capital in London. Thank you for joining us. Thank you and uh, good morning. Good morning. And we also connect with Yang jun Sok, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Thank you for being here. It's great to have you with us again. Happy to be here. And well, let's start with you, Mr. Clement, about this GameStop frenzy that we've seen. Well, it might have all been fun and games while the rally lasted, but do you think that small investors really beat the Goliaths of uh, Wall Street? And I mean, despite incurring huge losses, the hedge funds they seem to have um, remained wealthy and there was also news that the buying might have actually been fueled by institutional investors as well. Yes, so uh, I would say over the last two weeks a lot of retail investors have learned a lesson that uh, we learn time and time again in the market in the sense that you can maybe get uh, a short-term win into uh, in the market if you bet against the big institutional investors and hedge funds but uh, in the medium to long run uh, the hedge funds still have more experience more money and more staying power and tend to win not always but most of the time they did and they, they did so again with gamestop over the last two weeks so you wouldn't say that it was a sustainable strategy for these retail investors, it had to end sometime? Uh, yes. So uh, it's, it's a situation where the retail investors tried to pour in as much money, squeezing the, the hedge funds and were celebrating their victory, so to say, against hedge funds who lost a lot of money in a couple of weeks' time. But at some point, retail investors just ran out of money and that's when the, the course uh, reversed and GameStop gave back those uh, uh, gains again, with the end result that a lot of hedge fund managers and in particular short sale uh, hedge fund uh, did make a lot of money on the way as, hedge, uh, as GameStop stocks went down again. Well, Dr. Yang, meanwhile, here in South Korea, uh, South Korean retail investors and also politicians um, they want to see short selling banned permanently to reduce volatility. And while they might have been scarred by the massive dumping of shares by foreign and institutional investors last March, um, that was during the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, no other country in the world is keeping these uh, short selling restrictions in place as long as Korea is. What do you think the Korean retail um, investors are so worried about? And do you think they're right to be concerned to this level? Okay, well, theoretically, what uh, short selling is used for is to make money while the market is falling. So very often, uh, when the market is too high, uh, short selling can be a tool to sort of poke uh, holes in the bubble before it really starts. Uh, so it, uh, it maintains the value of the stock more or less where it fundamentally should be. Uh, now, uh, by getting rid of the uh, short selling, and because there's so much liquidity in the Korean market right now because of the uh, loose monetary policy, uh, the uh, stock market prices have gone up. Uh, it uh, recovered the losses that they made at the beginning of the coronavirus recession. And now it's been heading up to uh, record levels. Uh, and a lot of that rise may be a price bubble uh, that needs to be punctured. But because there's uh, no short selling, right now uh, it might not be getting punctured as soon as it should be and if the bubble goes up too high and it crashes well the higher the uh, bubble the lower the, the uh, bigger the fall is going to be and that may cause even bigger disruptions in the market 
But retail uh, individual investors, well, for now, they like the market going up because, well, they're uh, holding long positions and they're making profit off of it. And if the short selling is introduced, uh, they're afraid that the markets may fall and they will take a loss. Right, and so as you said, short selling, one of its functions is to keep the market prices, well, down to earth. And Dr. Yang, now Kospi grew 30% last year, uh, and the surge was driven by retail investors. How has the ban on short selling affected the dynamics of the market? And do you think certain sectors or companies have become overvalued as a result? Okay, well, there, you can never tell exactly when the market is overvalued until the uh, bubble pops, but there are some indications that it may be overvalued. Uh, now, uh, it, this is calculated using third quarter numbers, but price earning ratios of Korean stocks, uh, uh, as I said, third quarter reports, it's 13.47. It's substantially over 10-year average of 9.8 and 5-year average of 10.1. Also, uh, people like Buffett uh, compare uh, the uh, uh, valuation of the market with the GDP. And for the first time in Korea, the value of just Kospi alone has uh, exceeded 100% of Korea GDP, while market valuation of all stocks have uh, went over 120% of GDP. Just uh, theoretically speaking, t textbook economics says that the stocks are a uh, weighted average of future value of the company, and it's hard to see how the coronavirus uh, increased the value of the company, except for maybe very limited number of tech companies. And right now, even though the uh, Kospi is enjoying near record highs, uh, it's only been a limited number of firms which have been really able to take advantage of the uh, stock price rise. Now, Mr. Clement, um, on the issue of short selling, there were complaints that uh, the Reddit users set up the conditions for a short squeeze that we saw very recently. And retail investors, on their part, they retorted that they'd only been playing the game that institutional investors have been playing for a very long time. There was also controversy when Robin Hood stopped GameStop from being traded temporarily. Is there a sense of hypocrisy, do you think, on the part of investors? institutional investors and how do you, how should uh, regulators approach this issue of market manipulation so I am I don't think it's a hypocrisy on the sense on the side of institutional investors um, when I started my investment career more than 20 years ago in the technology bubble of the late 90s uh, we had Yahoo finance boards instead of reddit boards because reddit didn't exist but it was the same thing where retail investors got their news about interesting stocks and that created kind of a mass effect of a herd piling into individual stocks. And the same is happening today with Reddit. It's just on a bigger uh, scale because more people have the internet and trading for retail investors has become so much cheaper over the last 25 years. Um, is it a, a situation where the retail investors uh, try to beat the institutionals in their own game? I think it's a little bit different because the retail investors tend not to be coordinated amongst each other. It's more of a, uh, a classic uh, meme, you would say today, uh, of uh, investors piling in into the same stock because they heard from friends and online uh, contacts that it might be a good investment. Um, and in that respect, it is, uh, I think, different than what institutional investors do, who often have large sums of money that are coordinated and go into specific stocks and specific investments. And Mr. Clement, as retail investors, um, they gain more and more access to commission-free trading platforms as well. Do you think uh, these mean stock, the mean stock investing phenomenon that we're seeing, do you think it's going to increase in the future? I think it's uh, increasing all the time uh, because, as I mentioned, uh, when I started 25 years ago, we had that. We just didn't call it memes. Um, we called it Yahoo Finance Boards. But uh, it is definitely something that is rising and that is becoming more important. And ironically, uh, institutional investors are increasingly monitoring this by, for example, monitoring Twitter uh, feeds and uh, checking if uh, individual companies are hyped on Twitter and other forms of social media so they can uh, invest before a large number of retail investors come into the market and drive the share price up. 
Now, Dr. Yang, with all these changes sort of taking place in the wider stock market in the world, would extending the ban on short selling really help stabilize the uh, Korean stock market in the long run? What kind of implications do you see? Well, I don't think it'll uh, help stabilize the market in the long run. If you look at the research on whether banning short selling uh, helps the stability of the market, the uh, evidence seems at best mixed. So if you look at the long run, uh, banning short selling really doesn't do much to stabilize the market, though it may help in the, in the short run. That's why a lot of countries other than Korea uh, did ban short selling for a while. Uh, I think the uh, problem, though, is that uh, at least theoretically, it is easier to manipulate the market with, I think, short selling because you only need to borrow the stocks instead of buying it. So that's one concern. Then the second concern is that, well, if you're uh, holding the stock, if you're taking a long position, uh, you can get a price bubble, but a price bubble, at least in the short run, can be, a good, can be good for the economy because it increases the feeling of wealth that the uh, stockholders have and increases st uh, spending. But if you have uh, a profit taking from short selling, that means stock market is going down and that uh, contracts uh, spending. So it does create problems for the macro economy, which is another reason why they, uh, af uh, right after the coronavirus, they did ban uh, short selling for a while. Uh, but in the long run, you need some tools to help the market go up and help the market go down when necessary. So in the long run, uh, I think you're better off with uh, short selling tools. Uh, but uh, I know that a lot of Korean individual uh, investors are uh, not uh, happy that uh, short selling can drive down the market. And then other uh, individual investors are concerned that they want to take advantage of short selling uh, tools, but it's not always available to individual investors because uh, even though it may be uh, cheaper uh, for the institutional investors, it's not always uh, that cheap for individual investors. Now, Mr. Clement, here in Korea, um, Korean politicians, they seem to be siding with uh, their constituents or the uh, retail and the individual investors on the push to permanently ban short selling. How, how do you think strong restrictions on short selling would affect foreign, foreign investor sentiment? I would say most uh, institutional investors in uh, outside of Korea don't necessarily look into short selling restrictions as a impetus or uh, uh, an obstacle to investing in the Korean stock market. Um, however, uh, it is uh, I think to me clear that uh, if Korean stocks would uh, not be a, you couldn't uh, short sell uh, Korean stocks in the long term. Uh, I agree that it might actually lead to more bubbles or the uh, higher likelihood of bubbles in the Korean stock market. And yes, in the beginning, that might attract foreign investors. But if they burn their hands too often, they might stay away uh, in the long run as well. So there might be some knock on effects, but I think they are going to be minimal in the short term and uh, not too extreme uh, in the long term as well. And Dr. Yang, what do you think should be the regulatory approach to short selling here in South Korea? Okay, well, you, uh, I think uh, it's better to have short selling tools available. Uh, it'll be very hard to uh, uh, make these tools available for individual investors uh, because, well, you're borrowing the stocks to sell in the uh, stock market. And if you take a loss, individual investors uh, may not have the incentive to buy the stocks even at an expensive price and uh, give it back to the uh, people who lent it. That's been a problem all along. There has also been some problems that uh, when uh, some companies, when they're uh, short selling stocks, they do not borrow the stocks that uh, they're uh, legally supposed to borrow. Uh, so uh, those type of uh, falling in between the cracks uh, should be dealt with. Uh, and if you cannot uh, make the short selling tools available to individual investors, then perhaps uh, some kind of a fund uh, that specializes in short term uh, short, short selling may be warranted. And then individual investors can use that uh, index, uh, use that uh, short selling fund to hedge against the market if they feel that it's necessary. 
Well, we're going to have to end the discussion here today. That was Joachim Clement, Head of Strategy at Liver and Capital in London, and Yang Junsok, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. And to our viewers, as always, thank you very much for watching.